assalamu alaikum my dear students welcome to the new chapter it's biology 5090 chapter number 4 as per the new syllabus it's about the biological molecules my name is adnan khan in this chapter we are going to discuss what biological molecules are and where do they exist what are their properties and why are they required in the body so first of all let us start with the first the definition of the biological molecules biological molecules are actually those molecules which are present inside the living bodies which are present inside the living things and they are required for certain purposes and they have certain roles in our body example of biological molecules that are more frequently asked until the level of uh, igcse or o levels 5090 carbohydrates proteins lipids vitamins minerals fiber or which we also call the roughage and water these are the biological molecules present in the living things starting with the carbohydrates first of all these are the roles of carbohydrates in our bodies what role do, do they play in our bodies first of all carbohydrate gives us energy okay so they are the prime source of energy they are burned and energy is released as a result number second what makes them carbohydrates they all contain carbon hydrogen and oxygen and because they contain carbon and hydrogen that's why we call them organic molecules organic molecules are those that contain carbon and hydrogen there is one popular example of carbohydrates which you might have heard of it's starch starch is made from simple sugars just like this these sugar units are glucose so in this diagram you can see four glucose units combined together to make a starch molecule but they are not four exactly they are more than that they are thousand number so the number may vary and then over here we have the uh, sources of carbohydrates what things contain carbohydrate first of all the bread the cereals that we consume the pulses the fruits and root vegetables and potatoes they all contain starch in all carbohydrates the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is 2 ratio 1 okay if you if you take any example of carbohydrate mostly sugars if i say carbohydrate like glucose c6 h12 o6 so h12 o6 which means ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is 2 ratio 1 similarly there is another uh, carbohydrate that we call sucrose the common table sugar that you consume in your tea and coffee its formula is c12 h22 o11 so it's like h22 o11 which means 2 ratio 1 so it is the same ratio, ratio between uh, uh hydrogen and oxygen as found in water that is why carbohydrates are also called hydrated carbons sugars include now these are the types of the carbohydrate first type sugars include monosaccharides and disaccharides the word mono means single one saccharides for sugar so single sugar units are called monosaccharides double sugar units are called disaccharides examples of monosaccharides in your syllabus is glucose fructose and galactose these are three types of monosaccharides disaccharides examples are maltose lactose and sucrose look at one interesting fact they all contain o's in their uh, you know in the end so o's actually represent the sugars glucose maltose galactose and all 
but there are also polysaccharides that do contain O's in their name, like, like cellulose. So, formula of monosaccharides is the formula of monosaccharides. They all have the same formula C6, H12, O6. Formula for disaccharides C12, H22, O11. When two monosaccharides combine together, they make a disaccharide. But what about the number of atoms? Does it remain same? If you write on your notebook C6H12O6 plus C6H12O6, then you get 12 carbons. Okay. But what about hydrogen? Hydrogen is 12 plus 12 makes 24. But in here we got 22. So two hydrogen less. And then what about oxygen? Is O6 plus O6 which should make O12 but one oxygen less. So two hydrogen and one oxygen less. That makes one water molecule removed as a result of this process. And when two molecules combine together with the removal of one water molecule, the process is called condensation. So two monosaccharides join together by condensation with the removal of one water molecules. And these are the two most popular groups of carbohydrates, the sugars and the polysaccharides. Moving on to the next slide. What about polysaccharides as discussed in your syllabus? First of all, we have starch, the very popular polysaccharide in plants. Remember that plants do produce glucose during the process of photosynthesis but the glucose is beyond their need. They produce more than required amount of glucose. So the excess of glucose, the extra glucose is going to be stored in the form of starch in leaves, in stem and mostly in roots. So starch is a stored food in plants. Thousands of glucose units combine to make one starch molecule digested by amylase to maltose. When starch is broken down, what is formed? Maltose is formed, which is a disaccharide. And you might have discussed this in the enzymes chapter that one popular enzyme, amylase, found in the saliva that breaks down starch into maltose. How can we detect if a food sample contains starch? Can be detected using iodine solution. Can you guess the result? If starch is present, the iodine will change from brown to blue-black. Number second, we have the cellulose. It's also a type of polysaccharide found in plants. And guess where is it found? Where, 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 where can we see the cellulose? It makes the cell walls of the plant cells. So it's found inside the cell walls, outside the cell membrane. Cellulose is the component of the cell walls of plants. It contains thousands of glucose units as well. But there is a structural difference with starch that makes them individually separate. And there is one third type of uh, the third type of polysaccharide that is glycogen is a stored insoluble form of glucose in liver. Now, what, what's the difference between starch and glycogen? Starch is the stored form of glucose in plants. But if we humans or other animals take excess carbohydrate, excess glucose, then it is stored in the form of glycogen. So glycogen is the stored insoluble form of glucose in liver. And when we are starving, when we are having less than normal amount of glucose in blood, then you know the story. The glycogen is broken by insulin coming from pancreas. Insulin is a hormone released by pancreas that breaks down the glycogen in the liver and changes it into glucose so that the blood glucose concentration should be brought back to normal. How can we test if a sample, if a food sample contain sugars and especially reducing sugars? So then we carry out a test that is called reducing sugar test or we also call it Benedict test. Benedict was a scientist. Testing for glucose. First of all, this experiment will involve heat. Be careful about that. 
may be harmful and use the eye protection so first of all pour some glucose solution into a test tube add a few drops of benedict solution and heat in water bath okay no need to give it direct heat through bunsen burner or spirit lamp you just put it into the uh, hot water or boiling water for for number of periods and then you see what happen is that in initial uh, initially the glucose and benedict solution they both will be having blue color because the benedict solution's color is blue benedict solution is prepared using copper sulfate whose color is blue so that's why initial color of the sample will also be blue but then you place the test tube in hot water bath then it changes into green if there is less sugar green if there is moderate amount of sugar then yellow or orange and then if surplus amount of glucose or any other benedict sugars are present then it changes into brick red color it's just like color of the bricks so it's becoming dark red the second type of carbohydrate that we call the polysaccharide can also be tested how put a few drops of starch solution on a spotting tile add a few drops of iodine if the starch is present the color of the iodine solution is going to change from brown to blue black as you can see in here is the diagram is telling you if the starch is detected then you can see that black color over here and then if and this is a starch before testing okay so no starch uh, sorry no iodine solution poured on it and if you add poor, uh, uh, the iodine solution above it then you can see this uh, result fats or oil if they are liquid at 20 degrees celsius now we are discussing about the uh, second type of uh, uh, you know uh, biological molecule that are called fats or oils organic molecules also consist of carbon hydrogen and oxygen these are type of organic molecules We're talking about the fats or or oils look there's a difference between fats and oil although they both are considered to be lipids but fats are solid usually at room temperature uh, that is 20 degrees celsius and oil are liquid at room temperature so they are both organic molecule they also contain carbon hydrogen and oxygen just like carbohydrates the difference is that the ratio between hydrogen and oxygen sorry is not two ratio one as in carbohydrates fats and oil both are insoluble in water and one molecule of fat is consisting of one glycerol and three fatty acids that's all about their breaking you know when starch was broken all the glucose units were formed but when fat molecule is broken then one glycerol and three fatty acids are formed in this way you can see there is one glycerol and three fatty acids attached to it the fatty acids may be saturated fatty acids or unsaturated fatty acids the fatty acids that contain all the single bonds and they are shown in a straight line they will be called saturated fatty acids but if they are having curves and having one or more double bonds then we call it unsaturated fatty acid double bonds between carbon and carbon so if like if i'm having some uh, like double bonds in in any part between carbon and other carbon then we call it a uh, call it an unsaturated fatty acid saturated fatty acids are not recommended in food because they can cause coronary heart diseases unsaturated fatty acids are mostly found in oils and they are recommended to be taken as diet because they don't cause any this is this is a, a unsaturated fatty acids as you can see there are you know uh, double bonds in it uh, but and the, the linkage between the fatty acids to the glycerol is called the ester bond you might have discussed this in the chemistry proteins elements that makes protein carbon hydrogen oxygen the same three elements but along with uh, nitrogen nitrogen is always present in all proteins and sometimes they may contain sulfur and phosphorus they are large and usually insoluble 
they're made up of smaller units, subunits, which we call amino acids or amino acids.